On November 23, 2008, 10 Lashkari terrorists, trained by Pakistani military and spy agency ISI, arrived at Kolabal fishing point. Terrorists were spotted by a local fisherman as they disembarked from their dinghy boat near Badwar Park. Each of the terrorists carried AK-47 automatic rifle, around 500 rounds of ammunition, pistols, hand grenades and improvised explosive devices. Around 9.20 p.m. took place the first attack at the Kitrapati Shivaji Terminus. 58 people were killed at the CST railway station in an indiscriminate gun firing that lasted for about one and a half hour. Muhammad Ajmal Kasab and Ismail Khan had targeted the CST. The second attack was reported about 8 to 10 minutes later from the Nariman House area. The second group of terrorists blew up a gas station before attacking Jewish Charbad Lubavitch Outreach Center. Leopold Cafe, another upscale restaurant was the third target of the terrorists, who opened fire at the dining crowd almost at the same time as the attack at the Nariman House locality. The terrorists, identified later as Shoaib and Amma, who targeted the diners at Leopold Cafe, headed to the Taj Mahal Palace and Tower Hotel and planted bombs in taxis on their way. At the Taj, terrorists show Abandam were met with let gunmen, identified as Abdul Rahman Bada and Abu Ali. The Taj came under attack between 9.35 p.m. and 10 p.m. Oboro Trident Hotel was the last site to be attacked by the terrorists around the same time as the Taj. The terrorists entered the hotel through restaurant and started pumping bullets into the gathered crowd. Ajmal Kasab was the only terrorist to be captured alive. After attacking CST railway station, he and Ismail Khan had targeted the Karma Hospital. From there he ambushed a police team, killed six officials including ATS Chief Hemant Karkar and hijacked their jeep. Kasab and Ismail Khan were intercepted near Gurgaum Chaupati, where Tukaram Ombu grabbed the barrel of the rifle the former was firing from. This gave the police team time to overpower Kasab and capture him. He was tried and sentenced to death in May 2010. The attackers used a satellite phone and cell phones to talk to each other as well as their handlers that were based in Pakistan. The attackers and the handler used to gather information from the media and work according to that. There were also indications that the attackers had been taking steroids. At least one 174 people, including civilians, security personnel and nine of the attackers, were killed in the attacks. Among the dead were 29 foreign nationals. According to the then Maharashtra Chief Minister Vilas Rao Deshmak, 15 policemen and two NSG commandos were killed. Several sources have quoted Kasab telling the police that the group received help from Mumbai residents. The attackers used at least three SIM cards purchased on the Indian side of the border with Bangladesh. With evidence pointing to the attacks having originated within Pakistan's territory, India on November 28, 2008, requested the Pakistani government to support the investigation. Pakistan at first agreed to this request but subsequently backpedaled. The immediate impact of the attacks was felt on the ongoing peace process between the two countries. U.S. officials and others urged Pakistan's civilian government to take action against those suspected of involvement in the attacks. Acceding to India's request, the Security Council imposed sanctions on jamaat ut on December 11, 2008 and formally declared the group a terrorist organization. Pakistan claimed to have arrested Zaki Arahman Lakhvi, a senior leader of lashkar e and the suspected mastermind of the Mumbai attacks, on December 8, 2008. Subsequent reports indicated that several intelligence warnings by Indian as well as U.S. sources had preceded the attacks but that authorities, citing the lack of actionable intelligence, had ignored them. Aftermath the Maharashtra government planned to buy 36 speed boats to patrol the coastal areas and several helicopters for the same purpose. It also planned to create an anti-terror force called Force One and upgrade all the weapons that Mumbai police currently have.